and it's CCK Demystified, if you can spell that. Content Construction Kit. Um, when you first install Drupal, whether it's Aqua Drupal, as I prefer, or regular Drupal, uh, you have a page and a story. Pages and stories have basically two fields. What two fields does a page and a story have? Title and body. Title and body. How far are you going to get with title and a body? Not very far. Not very far at all. Um, you can create new kinds of content, and there are no slides for this. This is do it. You know, I, I'm not going to show you pictures of Drupal. I'm going to show you Drupal. So I'm going to find one of my sites. You know what? I'm not going to go like to my actual real site. That's okay. Um, that's that's not it. And then I'm gonna go, boom. That's not it. Let's go over here. So what is a site without content? What's what's a content management system without different kinds of really cool content to make? And I'll get my firebug off there. Anybody tired of looking at that? Firebug is gone. The off button. Who likes a new upgrade to Firebug? Is that throwing anybody else off? Okay. Flying out to present at Drupal Camp LA. Alrighty. So uh, I use the admin menu module. It gives me this really cool mousey over JavaScripty thing. Very nice. Um, you can also do this from the regular navigation. Um, in fact, in fact. Pardon me while I get my ducks in a row. Applications. This is great. This is like storing every single page that I'm calling up here. Okay. Even better. Okay. This is on my local host. Um, so pages and stories have titles and bodies. That won't get you very far. We're going to create kind of a, a, a you know a job posting kind of a kind of a site. Um, so I would be inclined to mouse over here to my content management and um, content. You can also go to your administer, click, let it load up. Go to content management, click on content types, click, wait for it to load. I highly recommend the admin menu module. Pro, uh, Drupal.org slash projects, no project, slash admin underscore menu. So I'll be using admin menu from here out mostly. Page story and this. So I've done a test already in here. Um, there's an add content type, okay? Um, if you uh, have a website that has Drupal, uh, I saw some more faces come in, please log into it. Um, if you need, does anybody need a sandbox? Any, any last people need a sandbox to play with? I can give you an address and give you admin access to it. No, okay. Oh, I did. Oh, the, oh, the password, the, the username and password are both la la, l a l a. So if I gave you a, a numeral dot dugvan dot com sandbox, the uh, username is la la. The password is la la. If you're dyslexic, that's al al, and you won't get in. You won't. Add content type. Add content. Uh, add content type is an option in Core Drupal. This is we haven't gotten to CCK yet. The name of this, you know, is um, the name of this content type will be I'm calling mine La La, okay? And uh, the the name is just what it what it is. And it, it talks you right through it: the human readable name and then the machine readable name. And it tells you what your restrictions are. The description: my test content type. And I'm not going to fix my typos because I'm not in the mood for it. At the point at which you create a new piece of content, there are submission form settings you can change. Now, the title and body, okay? The title is called title and the body is called, bo called body. We can change that. Um, if we're going to do a job posting, you know, job would be a, a better name or job, job dash title or whatever you want to do. So it's still the title of the node, the title of the piece of content. The body would be um, job description or job details, which is a few, le few less letters. Because I mean, I am that lazy. Minimum number of words. Now, th th this, we're creating a form that users are going to use to to fill this in. Uh, maybe we have department heads or something, and they're going to fill this in. So, uh, do, do we want to impose? You know, we, I want I want to have a healthy description of this job. So maybe I'm going to make them. You, know, you got to have 50 words at least. You know, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Explanation. 
you know, I tell them what to do. I tell them, you know, please include these kinds of information. So when they go to create a job posting, not, not a page, not a story, not a blog, not a poll, when they create a job posting, uh, mine's called La La. That's kind of silly. Um, call it job posting so it's in context of what we're talking about. So when the department's heads go to create a job posting, this description text is going to give them some hints on what to do because it's got to be quality. Workflow settings. Th these are the default settings that will exist when the person goes to create this kind of content. It will automatically be published. It will automatically be promoted to the front page. Well, I can tell you right now, I don't want it promoted to the front page. There's probably a special place on our website for job postings, and it's not in a big pile on the front page. Your front page is probably a very custom themed, you know, tricked out thing that has nothing to do with job postings. And you know what? I don't even want them published because they're going to go through me first. I want to look through them all before they get published. So they can create job postings all day long, but they're never going to see them published <coughs> until I say they can be published. Um, create new revision. If I want the ability to change things, I can track them over time. Uh, job posting really shouldn't be changed, but other things could be. So you, you can go back in time. You know, what, what was this post like a week ago? I can see that there's a, you know, it got changed, and I can go look at it. So we're not really doing rever uh, versioning, revisioning. Comment settings. My comment module is turned on. If yours is not turned on, you don't have this option. Uh, disable, I'm going to disable it. Default is disabled. All new job postings are by default not able to be commented on. So with me so far? It's got a human readable name, a uh, machine readable name, which is just what, you know, Drupal's internal reference. A little um, description to the person who's going to be posting this. If this is just all me, I'll leave that blank. You know, I know what I meant when I was there. Um, I'm not using the, the field, the, the label of job title. I'm changing the label to um, not just title, but job title. And then if I leave this blank right here, it tells me that there'll be no body. My, my, no my node, my content will be nothing but title. But that's okay because we know that CCK can come in. So I'm going to finally save this. And as you save this, is there anybody, especially you on my sandbox, is there anybody having issues with saving that? Good. Could be a little slow. So um, any problems? I'll, I'll move on if not. OK, so those of you who are following along just created a new kind of content. The page is still there. The story is still there. And I had something called this from earlier. And then job posting now appears. Um, lowercase letters, lo lowercase appears after uppercase, incidentally. Um, so, interesting. And I don't have the option to manage fields. So I need to go turn on CCK. If you don't have CCK turned on, please do so at this time. When you download the CCK module and, and unpack it and, and look at it in the uh, list of modules, a very fascinating thing happens. You get more than just a single thing to click. You get content, content copy. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here you're not going to get. Um, text, option widgets. I think number comes with it. Uh, the rest of those, I believe, are uh, no reference. And no reference, and what else? User reference. User reference. Okay. Now I'm going to turn on link, and you need to, you need to download link at some time. It's, image field is very important. If you want to have an image associated, um, so there's a variety of things going on. Yeah, you can copy content. You, you can create a content type, type on one site, and then wrap it up into a file and take it to a whole other site, as opposed to going through all the click, 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 click to create it again later. Um, and you can also store that in version control and keep track of that. So I'm going to save mine. Um, so some of you won't have file, file uh, or image. Can you scroll back down so you can Never get a call when you're giving a presentation. Uh, scroll down to what? So we can see what you've checked. Oh, sure. Content type. Uh, it's in core. No, it's not. It's in CCK, which is up here. Here it is. OK. So content, content copy, image field, link. You may not have some of these. Node reference, number, um, options widget, text, and user reference. Most of them. You can click them all. It won't hurt anything. And um, you know, we're just meandering through the CCK interface, creating content. Um, you're going to get the idea of this. If you don't use the exact same settings I do, you'll, you'll still 
grasp the idea of creating content. So now, um, if I use my admin menu, I'll go up there, but I'll, I'll be nice. I'll use uh, administer content. So that, that's admin slash content slash node. So it lists, oh, sorry, wrong one. Content types. There's like five things starting with C. I grabbed one. So now I have a list of page story, job posting, and this. And now I have an extra field over here. I can not only edit or delete them. If um, if, if we want to go back and change job title, I, have, I put a hyphen in there. If somebody objects to that, I can hit edit down here and take that hyphen out. Okay. Um, but here's manage fields. Look at this. I have three fields already in this, and, and this is true of every content type by default. It has um, what was the title, but we called it job title, and uh, the menu setting, because every page can have a menu item in the menu, um, and then what was the body, but we're now calling it job title. But we also need a salary. So for the label, it's going to be something pretty on the screen, so I'm going to initialize the first letter. Now this is uh, this field here, as as you may know already, con crit uh, construction content construction kit will um, create a table and fields. So we're naming the field in the table, which if on down the road you're going to be writing custom code to access these fields, you'll you, you can hand pick your your name here, and obviously I just put salary. So select a field type, and again there's three fields existing. I'm adding a new field with construction content kit. Uh, what's a good choice here, guys? Integer, Integer sounds good. No, it'd be kind of silly putting 17 cents, you know. I, I wouldn't take that. Huh? Do you have any users do it? No. You don't have control over them? No. When I, when I make it integer, they can't put anything else but an integer in. It'll, it'll, it'll just re, it'll format it right out. It, won't even, it shouldn't even give them an error. It just ignores it. Now, over here, my options are text list, te sorry, text field, select list, checkboxes slash radio buttons, or a single on-off checkbox. Interesting. Salary, yes or no? Yes, this, this job has a salary. Um, now, a text field may sound funny, but, you know, alphanumeric text, n numbers, numbers are text too. I don't know. That sounds funny. It's true. Uh, select list would be a drop down, so I'd have to put in a bunch of options for that, wouldn't I? <laughs> Obviously, we're going to do text field. I'm going to save this. And um, are most of us doing good at following along and creating, creating this content on your site? Okay. Yeah. Am I going pretty fast? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm talking a lot, but I'm, there's not a whole lot of clicking that I'm doing. So hopefully, if you click when I click, I can just not distract you while I'm talking. But um, so we, we created a whole fresh content type called job posting. We gave that content type a name. We put a little bit of help text in there for the user who's going to put it in. We saved it, went to um, admin content node type followed by our node name and added that other fourth field in. And we'll be adding another field in just a second, so you'll catch up with me. So I'm still in the, I'm still in the context of adding a salary to this node. Job, so here's the help text. Um, and this is words of wisdom for the person entering it in. Pretty self-explanatory, and I don't have dummies working for me, so they're going to be able to figure that one out themselves. Global settings. Is this required? You bet you. I don't want them making a publication of a job posting. Number of values, just one. I'm not going to do the range. You know, 50 to 55K. Well, which one do you think they want? Uh, minimums and maximums? I'm not playing that game. I, I hate applying for jobs. A prefix would be some kind of markup before the, the entry, and then a suffix would be some kind of content after that. Who can think of a really good prefix for this one? Dollar sign. And yeah, someone, just, someone else just said this one. Who, what's a good suffix? Comma zero zero zero. No? <laughs> Comma zero zero zero. <laughs> Security, escort them all now. How about this? We live in a global society, USD. Yeah. If you want to throw them off, put an A on there for agriculture. They have no idea what that means. <laughs> what is 7,000 USDA dollars? Where do you spend that? So, uh, <laughs> it's a bunch of frozen beef is all you get. Um, so, prefix and suffix, self-explanatory, right? Um, there may be many other uses for that, and you'll think of in, in, in your use case. Allowed values. Nah, we're pretty wide open. 
and I'm approving these before they get published anyhow. Um, PHP code, that's for another day. Um, and now we have four things in there. And uh, just for kicks, let's say that salary is probably the, the one of the most important things anyone's going to want to see. So I'm going to drag this up to the top. Woo! Oh, I got a little message that says, changes made in this table will not be saved until the form is submitted. So I'm going to save that. So now salary's on top. Don't you wish your salary was on top? Mm -hmm. I know. Um, and I can go back with this configure button here and change things. I can change anything I want to in there at, at a later time. I can remove the whole thing if I want to. Um, let's add, um, how about let's add, uh, Start date. nah, I didn't put the date module in there. The CCK date module would allow us to put dates in there. And it's all trick. There are just so many things. Thank you, Karen Stevens, for the date module. Uh, I'm going to go with um, uh, report to. Because uh, this job reports to somebody. I don't know. Also, and then the name of my field is who, just for kicks. So I'm creating, I, I, it had three fields. I created a fourth field called salary. It's going to be an integer with a dollar sign in the USD. I'm now filling out this field of uh, who do you report to on this job, if, if you get it. Um, and this will be a user reference. Because perhaps in this confines, we have the department heads are users on the site. So I'll do, a, I'll do a user reference. And it's going to be, um, I have options again, a select list. So just a, a drop down that, that kind of scrolls through it. A checkbox, a radio button. So everybody's name is there. And there's, there's uh, little checks or radios. And remember, and th this is the widget, by the way. This is the widget that says, you know, how do we get this content on, into the form? The widget of just a um, select list, the widget of a checkbox, or an autocomplete text field. So you start typing in John, and it'll finish, you know, Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. It'll just like automatically do that for you, and you can really save on the typing. That'd be cool. So we'll go for that one. And um, if you only have three people that they're, they could possibly, you know, you're a small company, then just give them a select box or give them a radio. If they can report to multiple people, remember, radio buttons are single, and check boxes are multiple. So the sky's the limit. Do it, do it the way you want to do it in your company. I'm going to save this. <coughs> And now, now I can get down and dirty with some of the details here. Autocomplete matching. So it contains. So if I, if I start typing John, um, you know, Sammy Johnson would also show up in the possibilities because Sammy Johnson has the word John in there, right? If I go starts with, then they, they type John. All they're going to get is John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt because John is not in the middle of it, in the beginning of it. Fair enough? Very self-explanatory. Size of the text field. Well, with, with that long guy's name I just mentioned, we'll keep it at 60. Um, reverse link. I only recently discovered this one. If selected, a reverse link back to the re yes, okay. Uh, a a select uh, a reverse link back to the referencing node will be displayed on the reference user's record. So when I go to look at John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt's user profile, there will be uh, an aggregate there of. To a, a, link, a link to all the job postings that he is a report to for, where his name appears in the report to, right? Um, so that's a reverse link back. So, so when you go looking at the, uh, the English department or whatever, they'll say, you know, oh, hey, wow, they, they, they currently have three job postings that, 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 that they're going to report. You know, people are going to report to that person if they get the job. So click it or don't. Help text, uh, you know, get some description to the user posting it, but really not needed. Default value, not really relevant, but you can imagine what you would do with it, do with it if you wanted to. Global settings required, everything's required these days. Number of values, we can put in here unlimited, you know, because I don't know, maybe we want to. And uh, user roles that can be referenced. Now, in, in, a, in, a, in a really built out website, I'm gonna have managers, supervisors, <coughs> Proofreaders, copywriters, department heads, supervisors, middle management people. Who knows? I could have all kinds of roles. Um, and, but the default roles in any, role in any Drupal Fresh website is either authenticated or anonymous. And, and once you're not anonymous, you're authenticated. And if you're not authenticated right now, then you're anonymous. Um, so I don't have a whole bunch of roles in here for different kinds of users. So sadly, we just have to check one box. And um, we can make it. Make, we can check in here that if a user ever gets blocked, 
they can't be used in this content. Fair enough. So that's a that's that's, that's the report too. And um, how am I doing? I'm halfway through. Um, I want to do something with a with a, a body, a big block of information. Um, I've got I got the job description already. Um, qualifications, qualifications. Wow, how about that one? Qualifications. We're just adding fields. We could just go on all day with this. And if we installed a gazillion more CCK modules, there'd be more things. We could, em embedded media field. Plug in a YouTube video, and it pops up the little uh, player for you. Um, things to do with MP3 uh, audio. Oh, um, Blip TV video. Um, what else is in there? There's all kinds of wild stuff. You can even place a view into a CCK field, thanks to uh, Jer from Advantage Labs in Minneapolis. So I'm going to call this qual. And this is going to be text, right? That makes more sense, text? Um, what, what's our best option? It's going to be a, a big block of area where they can put in a bunch of qualifications. Text area? Text area? Yep. Because text field is one field. Text area is a big box. Multiple rows. And this is going to be just like the body field, really, but it's going to be called qualifications instead. How many rows do we want by default? Five sounds good. Um, they can go beyond that, but it'll just kind of scroll up. They can put in 50 rows of information, but they just can only see five at a time. The help text, probably give them a lot of instruction. Default value, again, <coughs> usually not necessary. You still okay in the back row with my voice? I, okay. Um, Required, everything's been required so far. Number of values, just one. Um, plain text versus filtered text. Plain text. We're not going to have them putting HTML and, and what have you in there. We could put a what you see is what you get editor, so they can put bullets and highlights and color changes and bold things up. But that's another class. That's, that's another session. Maximum length, you know, stop the verbosity. Keep it, keep it to a minimum. Allowed values is irrelevant for this. So it gives us more options than we need. I'd rather have more options than I need than need options I don't have. Save field settings. So now we have all these going on. Um, let's put qualifications right below salary so that after they get all excited about the salary, they can look at that and think, oh, I'm not good enough. <laughs> then they go out and get, a, get, some, get some ice cream to make them feel better. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to save this because whenever I drag and drop elements or fields, that's what happens. So every new addition of a field has a field a field label. It has a name for the for the for the table row or for the field in the database, which you can just duplicate the same thing, and then um, a formatter, a format of a file, a format of uh, a node reference or an imager or a decimal or text or a user reference. Um, oh, there's other things too. There's one I just, I just thought of. Oh, five star voting. Five star voting. If you have the uh, voting API on and the five star module on, then you can put your five star as, as, a, as a field in, in here somewhere. And you can customize the settings on that. So uh, the name of the field that the human sees, the name of the field for the database field, um, the formatter, is it text, is it a file, is it a five star, what is this thing? And then the widget is the last thing you pick. And the more modules you install for CCK, those, these lists like, get pretty long. Pretty long. Um, I will, go ahead. In, in your edit view there, uh, you've got the little crosshair so you drag up and down. <coughs> what setting gives that to you? Versus you don't have it. I just got the negative through positive number range. It's a little tougher. Well, if you don't have JavaScript enabled, or if you're on Drupal 5, then you have weights. And if you're, wow, that's, that's Twilight Zone, man. I honestly can't imagine. That's wild. Skip it for now. I shall. Um, so that is that. Um, I, I'm inclined to go into the, to the display fields at this point. Uh, we're about the halfway point. Does this make sense? The, the label of the field, the database name of the field, the formatter, 
and the uh, widget and the formatters and widgets will grow as, as you install more things. Is that making sense? Okay. So uh, just your basic node before you do anything has a body and a title. That's boring. You can't build a site with that. Can't build a site and use this microphone. Um, can't build a site with a body, body and a title only. So we're adding all this stuff in. Um, just go, go, go shopping through the CCK modules. There's a zip code. Zip code automatically format. Okay, I could, I could, couldn't I use zip code and integer and just text? That's a zip code. What, what if they put in um, 901200? It would, it would store that in the database. And then when, when my map module goes to draw a map of where they live, <coughs> I get a Google error, right? Or if I want to do, I want to, who, who all lives in this general area of the country? Well, they're going to be excluded because they put too many digits. Telephone, CCK module gives you telephone. You can choose. I want my area codes with, with parentheses and then a space and the number. So they, they, can put, they can put the data in any way they want, 10 digits in a row, but CCK automatically stores it in the format that I want. You know, I'm not imposing, you've got to put dashes here and whatever. So, CCK, so I, I, again, I could use text. I couldn't use energy or integer. I couldn't use integer for that, but I could use just text for a text field. But by doing it, there's a by doing it with CCK uh, zip code and CCK phone number, you know, and then CCK address actually adds a bundle of fields. CCK address module adds a bunch of cool stuff and it validates it for you. CCK's email module makes sure it validates to a valid address. Um, the date module is a wildly awesome beast of, of lots of cool stuff in there. Um, who can think of another piece of content that... Huh? The link. The link, the link is cool. I, I can force them to, um, to give it a description, and then when it renders, I can just have the description hyperlink to that address, or I can show the, the title as not a link, and the, and the address is a link. I mean, you know, I can, I can, I can impose my will to the specific occasion with the link module. On, on the photo, photos are actually files. So the, uh, for, the format is file, and then the widget is image. And then, when it'll, so you browse your, your local directory, you select the image, you hit the upload button, and it, you see a, a preview of the image right there, and then you fill out the description or whatever you're doing, and then you save the node, and you know that you have the right picture you wanted, you know that it uploaded, and it's previewed right there. It can store all images if you like, as you change them. If you keep changing the image every couple of weeks, it'll store the old ones, and you can pick one of the old ones, bring it back up, and delete the rest. So a yeah, lot, of, lot of interface. We're, we're building database tables with a GUI, and we're, we're building forms, HTML forms, with a GUI that connect to the database. Yay for CCK. Because you can't build a site with just a body and a title. Title and a body. So display, everybody cool with some display fields now? Okay. Now, display fields. Um, all, the only thing we can control here are the CCK fields that we created. The title and the body are not represented here. Our title is job title and our body is job description or job details. Um, many, many people, remember if I left that body label empty, I, I used job details. If I leave that empty, there is no body to the node. There is no body to the content. Then I could come in here and create job details, text area, you know, text, text area, and then I have control. So if you want control over that, what was the body, then don't use, because the node module gives you title and body, that's, that's, CC, that's core, Drupal core, <laughs> but I can ignore that Drupal core field of body and force it into here, and it actually gives me just more, than, more control than this. There's other things it also gives me that we won't go into. So that, that's the big, big craze right now, is to never ever use core bodies. So I can do things here. Um, here are the fields. Here's the label. And, and the middle is exclude. So who knows the difference between a teaser and a full node? Okay, teaser has a read more. If your post is even long enough to cross that threshold, then you get the read more link. And then it sends you to the full node where you see it all. So um, in our case, uh, the salary and qualifications and report to, those labels are pretty important. Uh, the values of those fields just floating in space with no title would be kind of silly. Maybe not salary, I guess that would make sense. So maybe in my teaser, uh, if, well for one thing, yeah, so maybe in my teaser I'm going to say hide, hide the label. Okay, the dollar value is enough. But the qualifications, I want the, word, I want the label to be above it. 
Okay, so I'll leave that value. And then I want the label of the report to to be in line. So I'm going to have the dollar amount. I'm going to have uh, qualifications and then that body, that text area. And then the report to is going to be in line. So my first label is missing it's because it's hidden. My second label appears above the content. My third label, which is report to, appears in line. So I'm, 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 dis I'm managing the display of the fields. Fair enough? Um, and um, if I wanted to, you know, maybe that's, that's, that's going to be too much information. The qualifications can get pretty, pretty big. Um, so maybe I'll hit the exclude button here. And when you're in a teaser view of this, it doesn't even show the qualifications. Just the money and who you report to. Mm -hmm. This isn't the most excellent use case, but just what if. And then over here, on, on the full node view, um, it's giving me a little example of what, what that would look like. Um, well, either side, I can, I can demonstrate this. Um, do I want the comma in there? Do I want it unformatted? Do I want it hidden? I'll choose the comma, and I'll choose that for both. Commas are good. Um, the qualifications, plain text or trimmed. Um, plain text removes any, any formatting. So if we did have a WYSIWYG editor, editor, WYSIWYG editor for a Waskly Web at the enter content, um, maybe in the teaser, let's keep it plain text. Let's not confuse the screen with a bunch of formatting. But then over here, the default is with the formatting. And the report to, default, default's fine. So plain text just strips out any kind of special formatting. And then I can save this. And if we had a gazillion fields, which that's going to happen, as you go on, you're going to set these monster, monster lists of fields. Um, Let's go over. Yeah. Does it matter in, on the qualifications <coughs> teaser that you change it because you already checked exclude? Oh, funny. No, it'll store the. Okay, does it matter that since I'm excluding the qualifications field, I changed it to plain text? Uh, it, it's irrelevant. It's um, uh, yeah. So, but when I go to when someone says go ahead and include that, and I and I uncheck that, it'll fall back to the plain text. So, good call. So I'm going to save that. Now, let's do something really interesting. Really interesting. Who's up for the interesting part? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, let's go look at our content type of story. What in the world? Why isn't, oh, you know, you know what? When you save this page, nothing really happens. I was waiting for my page to refresh. Um, let's go over here to our content types. You can get there from um, site management, or content management, content types is your link there which is site.com slash admin slash content slash types, types. So I'm, I'm looking again at my list of types. Um, let's say for whatever reason, this page content type here was something else and it needed some more fields. I can go to manage fields. And drop down here, and if you look, it says existing fields, right? And my drop down selector is the integer for field salary, which is salary the text for qualifications and the user reference for for report to. So if, if I've got this you know bucket of fields I've created over the course of time, you know I've got five different content types and they all have different kinds of fields, but they can share fields. If um, if a salary is important to this content type, I can add it right there. It automatically goes it automatically goes through and grabs the information. Now I can change a few things about this. I can change this from a text to a select list. So it's still the basic same kind of information, but for whatever the use case is on this page content type for some reason, I, I want to drop down select. So I do that. I can save that. And now the help text that may be different for this case. Um, it's, it's not required in this case maybe. Um, number of values. Um, for whatever reason, it's going to be a range. So I want them to give me two values. And then, and then I'm not going to put a minimum and maximum. And I'm going to keep my dollar sign and my USD. And I'm not going to impose allowed values. Let them do what they want. So now, without starting from scratch, I've, I've kind of copied over a field from another content type into this content type. And you can do that over and over. If you care to know, um, there was a table created for the um, content type of job description or job posting, and it had 
a salary field in it. But now that salary field is being used by two separate tables, it actually got taken out to its own third table. So there's no longer, a, there's not a salary field in the uh, story table or main page. Page. There is not a salary field in the page table. There is not a salary field in the job posting table. There is simply a salary table. And um, there'll be, if I have 10 pages and 20 job postings, there'll be 30 entries in that table. So if you're into that, that's what's going on under the hood. And when you write queries later on down the road and write your own modules, you got to find out where those values are and where to go. It's gone. They weren't. They're, they're both. In, they're all integers. Yeah. And uh, in fact, um, there's uh, we allowed. Yeah, we allowed multiple values. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. There uh, there may even be a delta field. So uh, if node twenty is a page and it has a minimum of ten dollars and a max of twenty, there there may be the uh, NID field, the VID field. Uh, so the NID is 20, node 20. The VID is 20 because we're not using version. Um, then the delta could be 0 for $10 and the delta of 1 for 20. Delta is how you get multiple values of one thing. So in that case, we'd have uh, one more field than we did uh, aggregates of content. So, whew! But that's what's going on under the hood. Content construction kit because you can't build a site with a title and a body only. Does everybody feel reasonably sure they could thumb through all the CCK options, zip codes, data addresses, links, and follow the, I mean, we saw all the little text that was being thrown up there. Use the advanced help module. The advanced help module should be installed and enabled at all times. I, I keep it on. Um, there's really some really cool, you know, not, it's not just newbie, it's, it's just good stuff. Uh, you know, I do some crazy stuff with some sites and some crazy edge cases, and the advanced help module gives me It'll give you pages, like a full screen of not just a, a sentence or three, but like paragraphs. So if you keep that on, you'll get even more information on how to, how to build these content types out. But we've got time for Q&A for 14 minutes. Content construction kit. Who's got a question about it? What's that? Field groups. Okay, if you have the field group module installed, you can group, you can group things. Um, yeah, I can't think of a really good case right now because the address menu automatically puts them into an address group. Um, oh, 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 um, um, measurements. If you're, if you're, um, if you're, if you're, if you're having a yard sale or something, I don't know. What's a good example of your people? Um, what's a, what's a, what's a good example? I can't think of it. I don't know. Like, like, um, like, like, like a bio portion of it. You know, age, sex, weight, height. You know, yeah, your contact info. Con, yeah. So if, it is, if this is a person, then contact info. Um, you know, or, or just you know, or just you know, exactly. And numerous phone numbers. And you can, and then you can also have a um, what's that? You can also make a field have multiple instances. Well, that's that's, that's the default. When it says how many values are allowed, if you hit it unlimited, then when they put in a phone number. Um, you know, phone number and then a little little place for text. Okay, you group those together and you make them side by side. Phone number and text. So this number, cell. Hit the more button, this number, office. Hit the more button, this number, and pager. If, if people even use pagers anymore. So, so, adding, so hitting the more button when you're creating the form would give you more and more stuff and it'd all be in one group as well. What do you mean? Field, group, field, Field set, field group. I think the field group module allow. So, you, so you define a, a, a not a field. You define a group. So instead of calling it a field, you, you choose the formatter of group. So it creates a bucket to put other fields into. And then on your on your managed fields, it nests them. So picture this here, nested in, indented in, and the three that are indented in are underneath their uh, field group. I saw a hand over here. No way, really? Really? Okay. Well, the location module, um, it may be that the location module exposes its own address field, because uh, location, of course, would deal with that. 
Um, so that, that may be the case. And maybe you wouldn't use all the functionality of location and all the mapping, just use the addresses. Yeah? Uh, I was looking at the create content of Wizards to see what it looked like. And the job posting had two salary entries. I'm wondering if, because I remember you made a point of saying you don't want one. On the page, I created two because it's going to be a minimum and a maximum. Right, and I think that changed the job posting. Oh, hey, OK. He says that when he went back to look at the job posting, um, it, um, so he says that when we added two values in the story, because the use case was minimum and maximum, that the job posting inherited that. Where's my job posting? I'm on the wrong, on the wrong page. Yeah, thank you. Uh, job posting, manage fields. Hey. There's a party tonight, it's on campus at the pub, and the information is on the website. Thank you, CC. Um, so, um, it comes to this, doesn't it? Uh, I'm going to see these two fields. Uh, you said create content. So I'm going to create content, job posting. And the man says I'm going to see two values for my salary. Okay, the point being there, never change the value. <laughs> create, create a whole new salary if you need to. So there'd be a salary JP for a salary job posting, maybe, and then salary something else for another salary. The things you find out when, you, when you're done doing things. Was there a question over here? I have one. In the back. Uh, it's about fields. Is there a way that you can turn something that you've entered into a field into a tag or a tag term? When to tag and when not to tag. Um, taxonomy is very, okay, I, I can put, I can create a field called tags. And I can put it on my blog. Okay, my blog has a title and a body, just like everything else. I can create a field called tag right now and add it to my blog and put it in between the title and the body. And I can put tags in there all day long, right? Uh, if you're in the views class, you know that you can create views. And, and look for different kind of values and different things going on in that field. However, you're kind of engineering your own taxonomy if you do that. Why not use the taxonomy module, which has the concept of a vocabulary. In a vocabulary of taxonomy, all these terms get stuffed in, and there are, there are, there are, you can use synonyms. Fast, quick, rapid, and undelay are synonyms of each other. So if someone tags their stuff with one, not the other, then I can tell taxonomy, that's really the same thing. You can't do that in CCK tag field. So don't create your own tagging environment. When you really want to use really proper taxonomy and really proper tagging, use the core taxonomy module. So, so that was a statement, really not an answer to your question. Well, so, so that means if you enter something into a field that also happens to be a taxonomy term, then it will hit. Well, you'll get, it'll be in this list of things you can move around because taxonomy hooks into the CCK API, if you will, kind of, and creates a field like any other field. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, a lot of modules. You'll install a module and all of a sudden you'll have an option to add certain kinds of fields um, to that. So yeah, so you have, you have field level control of that. Ask it again. He's good. He's good. Eight minutes in the back. In the, going back to your field group, could you use field group to group multiple fields and then set that to let unlimited? unlimited? Yes. That's a recent development, and thank God for it. Yeah. Um, title and author of a book. Okay, there's the Amazon module. You can just type in the is bin, and it'll pull up. You know, it'll create. An, it, it, it brings in the the, the 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 picture of the book through Amazon, the Amazon.com API. The picture of the author, um, maybe a price or something. There's all kinds of stuff. But um, if you're gonna do your own thing, title and author, um, you can group those and make them repeatable as a group. So you're not hitting more for title and more for author and more for title and more for other. It keeps on duplicating them. And the database schema for that's really wacky looking too. If you're into if you're into that, there's no there's no end, no end to what CCK can do. Like I said before, you can you can you can plug a view. You can use calculated fields. I want this field to be the, today's year, 
to today's date minus the uh, user's birth date, and then do a little bit of do a little bit of you know processes with it and and just and truncate it to the year value and their age. So this field always increases. Can we can we put age field integer uh, integer um, f uh, format and then um, widget of text and they can just put their age in? We could do that. Is it going to be true all the time? It's going to be true for less than a year. I can put it. I can ask for their birth year, and then I can put a computed field in of age and make it do the math. That's a CCK field. That's the, that's the computed field module. How cool is that? You know? No, in, no end in sight, except for my end. Six minutes. CCK content construction kit because you can't build a site with just a body and a title. All right. Okay, I, I've chased off a third of you. I can go back to sound effects. Hey, Blue. Uh, yeah. Going back to the taxonomy and, and fields, um, say you have a, uh, you want to create a directory, and you have states, cities, whatever. Uh, would you use taxonomy? Or you, you use CCK. Well, I'd use the address module, which someone alluded to wasn't ready for Drupal 6. But there, 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 there surely is something that exposes a usable f bunch of address fields. Um, I wouldn't use taxonomy for that. No, I mean, uh, say, the directory after, you know, for the users to, to search through, they, they have to click state and then a city and then some. Yeah. When you're searching? Yeah, when you're searching. So that, I, I'm just, yeah. I went uh, looking down the road, yeah, that, which would be the easier way of searching for, and all that yes, stuff. and that's good. He, he's, he's thinking down the road, I'm going to build this content, but what are people going to do with this content? They're going to search this content. They're going to want to search by specific pieces of the content. So by all means, back up every now and again and get a bird's eye view of what you're doing because you're going to waste a day and a half of labor on something that's not going to get your end goal. So in keeping in mind of the future and, and how we're going to search by state, search by city, search by what have you, that actually is a views question. When I go to view this data, I can expose the field. I'm going to filter by state. I'm going to expose that value and let it be a drop down that the user can select. It's still just a state field. But the views module allows us to expose a filter. And I'm sure you caught that in the two hours uh, that uh, you spent with uh, Rain, Bria. I have stuff to give away. Those of you who stayed, get paid. Man, I keep forgetting this. I want to I need a shout out to uh, my employer, duoconsulting.com, who got me out here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and who recognizes this uh, logo on the back of my Mac? Lobot. Lobot. Who needs some Lobot stickers? I'll put a pile of them over here. I saw somebody else with a Lobot sticker on the back of their device. Uh, there's one. I chased one away. Okay. All righty. Time to get stuff away. Now here is using Drupal. Okay, who already has a copy of this? Is it awesome? Okay. Um, yeah. Recipe books. You go. I got three minutes. Step by step. Install this module. Enable it. Go in and configure it. Install this module. Enable it. Go in and configure it. And when you're done, you know, so you create the CCKs and then you create the um, the views for it and change your roles and your permissions around. From beginning to end, it's how to build like what, like 11 or 12 projects, including a shopping cart with Ubercart. Um, who wants using Drupal? Okay, good deal. I've got, are you buying the front row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine rows or eight rows? Okay. Um, is, that, is it dot org? What is it? Every time I give this stuff away, I have to remember what the name of the site is. Uh, okay, minimum one to one to eight. I think it was how many? Okay, six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So one, two, three, four, five. Which one is six? <laughs> one, two, three. Okay, well, everybody raise your hand and roll six. How many of you are there? Thank you. If you'll do the work for me. Okay, one is to my right. I almost caused a bloody fight up there, unless, unless number three wins. Did somebody move? <laughs> so I'm still five, right? Have you been there? Okay. <laughs> two! So who's the real two? Are you guys together? Good. Come get it. Before this other guy shows up again. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I could, but then that would also mean that zero is the first one, and you're still off by one. Oh. Now, um, learning views, a DVD on learning how to, learning views from Lullabot. Learning CCK. What's CCK stand for? Why would you need that? I'm going to use that. You can't build a site with just title and body. That's the bomb. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go through one through six again. Thank you. Five. You know what? I'm gonna try something else. Five? That says so rigged. They got three fives in a row. Uh, row one. What do they got? One, two, three, four of you? Okay. Oh, was, it six, was it six last time? Oh, so sorry, okay. Sorry. The same guy raised his hand again. I'm sorry, I'll go with five. Raise your hand, yes, exactly. Raise your hand and roll five. All of you. How many of you? Okay, five, thank you. No one's moving? Five again, wow. Okay, come grab the video of your choice. And grab your stickers up here front too. This is the understanding. So yeah, we have CCK and views. Yeah. Wow, man, did I compare in the least to the CCK video? No. Oh, thank you. Good heavens. Uh, theming basics yeah, is exactly. what you don't have. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, what, how many rules do I have? Eight? Eight. Okay. One. Okay, you guys got your second chance. And there's four of you, right? Four. One. Over here. Uh, understanding Drupal. Understanding Drupal is a, a very high level bird's eye view. You want to get us to the boss when you're like, man, get off the proprietary stuff. Open source is where it's at. Drupal's ready for prime time. So it's, it's not instructional how to build stuff. It's kind of an overview. You really should know it. You really should. Who are those videos by? These are all by Lullabot. Yes. Co founders uh, Jeff Robbins and Matt Westgate. They're all over the country, including uh, in parts of Canada. Yeah, they're good. They're good guys and gals. Okay, I got two more videos. Eight row, eight rows, right? Generate five again. I can't do it. I, I got. I gotta have a fresh. I gotta have a fresh roll. One, three, three. This is, this is not, this is unrandom, don't worry. <laughs> Raise your hand in row three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, correct? Someone just told me that, didn't they? Okay, this is wearing me out, man. I'm taking a nap. Two! You've got the CCK, which we just went through partially. I don't know why you'd need that. Don't tell me. And then the bird's eye view of Drupal. I'll do the CCK. Exactly. So, um, I'll give you choices now. I've got uh, you can't have my book, please have mine book. Learning six Drupal six module development by Matt Butcher from Healthcare is an awesome book. 
Uh, Pro Drupal Development by John Van Dyke. He is a lullaby. He does not when he wrote the book, but he is now. Um, those are must have. I got a lullaby shirt. It is not Dougie Summer. Okay. Um, I got the Anderson and Drupal, and everybody gets a sticker. So you get a choice of the shirt or the or the um, video. Eight rows, right? Three. Six. I did six. Five. Two. Three. Okay. How many you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is like Price is Right. This is just nutty. So the bird's eye view of Drupal or the shirt. Last one. Here we go, guys. Eight. 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 On the top. How many you got up there, guys? Six. Six. Four. All righty. Okay, a couple, couple words about the training videos. Um, nice to meet you, Zone. I gotta stop this recording, this Camtasia recording. <laughs> There's a giant giveaway. <laughs> Who stopped this thing? <laughs>